what time it is. Y'all know it's time to go ahead and recap this whole Real Housewives of Atlanta Park Frizzy. Yeah, you're gonna notice I do have a broken nail still. You're gonna see this broken nail in a whole a lot of videos. And I ain't gonna get my nails done until my nails need to be filled. Cause I don't feel like doing them right now. So you're gonna see there's a whole heck of a lot. Anyway, I just want to come in as par usual and chime in on part Frizzy of the reunion Real Housewives of Atlanta. Okay. The show is officially over until next season. <laughs> okay, but here's the deal, on some real shit. I know there was a lot of hype, and I mean a lot of hype about this particular episode of the reunion, okay? Y'all know we were all on it, like ready to watch it, like it was gonna be some cray cray stuff going on. I did not expect any fighting physically, fighting or any of that kind of thing to be happening or going on, but I did expect it to be a little bit more cray cray than what I actually saw. I don't know if it was just me or if I was just, you know, real, real extra hype about part three. Did anybody else feel like they were a little bit disappointed? Like they didn't feel like it was enough of a part three to really hype it up as much as they did? That's just me. I just felt like there was a lot more that could have been done in specific portions, but you'll probably notice that as I start talking about what happened in this particular episode. But let me know if you also felt like, you know, it was a little bit of a letdown. It wasn't as cray cray as I thought it could have potentially have been. You know what I'm saying? So in our show, it's whatever. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, y'all. So you already know we're going to get into Kenya, okay? And her crazy ass. One of the first things they're going to talk about is the whole situation with Kenya and Walter. Now, y'all know, and I'm sure you've heard by now, if you don't know, know, that the whole Kenya Walter relationship was more than likely some BS, okay? We already know that behind the scenes, Kenya wanted to look more like what it was, more than what it was, that whatever she done did to get that man to get on that show, to try to make him appear as though they were in a serious relationship. I just think at one point in time, like I've said in my previous recaps, that Walter, I think he went along for the ride, thought he'd get a little publicity, you know, for his little tow truck company, which he got a whole hell of a lot of publicity for, and realized very quickly that shit went left when she took it to a whole nother level, talking about, I just want to get married, I want to have your babies, I want to have your kids, when we go elope, all that kind of stuff, you know what I'm saying? I think it's at that point, he was like, oh hell no, I'm finna jump ship. What I wasn't a fan of was the fact that his ass wasn't on the damn show where the F was Walter to defend himself now I'm not gonna sit here and say that they probably didn't want him on the show it was probably a situation with Kenya where Kenya was like I ain't gonna be on the show if Walter's gonna be on the show or whatever the case it just sounded like it just based on what a couple people were saying like Peter might have mentioned something or whatever I know Andy said something about the possibility that he was upset about not being on the show to defend himself personally I think they should have had Walter on the show they had everybody else on the daggone show why wouldn't you have Walter on the show when he was in every damn mother sucking episode that don't make no damn sense the dude should have been there to defend himself even if you had him in a separate room in a green room somewhere behind the scenes via satellite in a tow truck in his tow sh t t trucking shirt or whatever the case his ass should have been able to speak on everything because at the end of the day we got absolutely nothing from that conversation it still hasn't been a situation where we have been able to truly determine whether that shit was fake or not now we know it was I'm just saying it would have been a good idea for Andy to have had Walter on the show whether it was from satellite or whatever the case and if Kenya's ass bets that damn fan one more time I'd have been like what Boy, y'all, she batted that fan probably 50 times this episode and probably batted it probably over a thousand times between the three reunion episodes. And did you notice that Candy's ass was about five feet away from her, further away from her than she's been the last two episodes? I know Kim just got off stage, but I promise you, once Kim got up and they went and put Kenya right back in, uh, Candy was like, uh, nah, bitch, you ain't gonna fan me with that damn fan. My black ass is over here. As cuckoo kachu as Kenya true truly truly is I mean you all know she already nuttier than a fruitcake the bitch had some really funny ass one-liners I promise y'all she killed them with words she was like don't come for me unless I send for you or this bullshit flirting with someone does not a whore make so we already know we gotta go ahead and move on to when the husbands came on stage okay fiance's husbands whatever okay ex-husbands that became husbands or soon to be husbands or whatever and we gotta go into some of the conversations that happened with that 
I didn't gonna lie to y'all. I was so Team Peter this particular season, actually. For real, for real. He had some funny-ass one-liners. And I agree with a lot of the shit he done said. There's a lot of shit he said, especially in this reunion, where he was calling Kenya's ass out, that I was like, you better go, Peter. Because everything he was saying, I was thinking in my head the whole time, like, this bitch better be quiet with all that extra twirling. Talking about some twirl on this. And y'all notice, every time somebody bagged baby into a corner, her ass got up twirling that yellow-ass dress. That dress is gorgeous, don't get it twisted. But the bitch wearing the dress is cuckoo could damn shoot. So they're talking about Walter and how Walter was upset with the fact that his ass was not there to defend himself. Kenya was calling him all kinds of extra stuff. Talking about, you know, his sexuality and his preference and all kinds of extra stuff. Talking about she don't talk about him, but every opportunity she gets, she's putting some under slided, underhanded, slippery, slimy, rude ass remark about Walter. So Peter is on the defense about Walter. His ass is sitting there like, well, damn, here's the deal. Walter did the radio show because he felt like he needed to defend himself. Let's just be real. And we can also be real about the fact that Walter came on the show thinking he was going to be able to get some additional publicity for his tow truck company, which is exactly what that man did. He was always rocking that damn tow truck and shirt, okay? But be real about real. You out here putting a whole bunch of stuff out about Walter as a man and as a human being, he has the right to defend himself. So even when he, Walter, came to Peter, Todd, and Apollo and asked him if he should do the radio interviews, they were all like, don't do it, man. Just let it ride, let it ride. And he went ahead and did it anyway. Now here's the part I was waiting for, okay? And this is the womp, womp, womp. This is the part where I was kind of like, we could have dug a little deep. We could have gone and delved in a little bit more into this particular topic. This is when Apollo and Kenya started to go at it, okay? Phaedra was a little bit in it, but it was primarily Kenya and Apollo. Here's where the womp, womp, womp happened. Where it was like womp, womp, where they could have done a little bit better with the show, okay? So they start going at it. And according to Kenya and Apollo, there was some kind of texting, some inner exchanging of texts, okay? Not necessarily sexting. Of course, Andy was looking at the text and he said it's not sexting. Texting, but there are texts. What I'm salty about is number one, why didn't they show Kenya's daggone phone? They show every damn thing else. Why didn't they show her phone? Why didn't they do a little screen cap of what the text actually said? I felt like that was some bullshit. The second part of it was they just went back and forth for about two minutes. That was the whole thing about that damn show. That was the reason why everybody wanted to watch the reunion part three was to hear and see what the hell went on between Kenya and Apollo. And I really felt like nothing really for real came out of it. I mean, let me know what y'all think. Yeah, there was some shady business going on, but what it came down to was who initiated contact, who did most of the texting, how were the texts back and forth. And I mean, I didn't even lie to you. When Apollo stood up and was like, if I came match you you would have gotten it you would have took it i was like you better you better go boy because you know damn well she wanted that ass okay i was just salivating at the mouth like i really wanted to know what the f kind of texts were going between the two of y'all where y'all felt like it was necessary to bring it up and how phaedra was calling her all kinds of whores i need to know what kind of conversations y'all were having i mean y'all already put it out there Let's see the daggone text. My thing is this. Neither one of them mother suckers should have been texting each other to begin with. I already had a problem with the pool situation because when she pulled it, pushed his ass in the water, his ass should have just left it just like that. He should have just kept on the swimming and swam up to his damn wife, Phaedra. Instead, his ass gets out the pool or whatever the hell. It's been a while since I've seen the episode and I know one of y'all will correct me if I'm wrong, but then he goes and lifts her up, okay, and jumps in the water. Doesn't push her in the water, doesn't drop in the water jumps in the water with her still inappropriate as hell and then on top of that y'all continuing conversations by text uh, i'm gonna need y'all to not i wish a mother sucker would after that instance even have each other's phone numbers i know y'all on the same damn show but i'm gonna let you know right now let you not get into a reality show situation he ain't gonna have nam damn bitches numbers i'm just saying i gotta give it to my girl portia okay couple things number one Y'all, y'all saw the, the monologue, okay? And they did a little recap of some of her funniest moments, talking about some 265 days of the year. I can't even laugh too much about her because I feel for her in this particular situation. Y'all, her man wasn't there and, I mean, let her tell it. 
everything is fabulous to a certain extent. Of course, she acknowledged the fact that they do have some issues they're trying to work out. But at that very moment, you knew she was going through all kind of turmoil. And for her to give that entire monologue and to stand by her man the way that he did, the way that she did, Cordell should be ashamed of his damn self. It was a week before he done filed for divorce and she probably got served those papers like, ah, uh, you know what I'm saying? Not saying she probably didn't have an idea something was coming because, you know, you don't know what happens behind cl people's closed doors. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not even going to sit here and lie to you. I felt bad for the girl. She was like, that's my man and I support him. And she was right or die. You hear me? I feel bad for the girl and I hope everything works out in her favor. I do not know for certain if she's going to be on next season. However, I am hearing that they are going to actually bring her back and I'd like to see it because the honest to God truth is not because I want to see what happens between the divorce. I want to see how she continues her life because on some real shit, I want to see her do damn well on her own doing her thug this will meet somebody else. You know what? There's got to be somebody out there that wants that. You know what I'm saying? In addition to her other, you know, personality traits that we so know and love. She sang, y'all. I mean, they let her sing. You know, she was like, Oh my God, I'm gonna sing. Really, Andy? Oh my God. Next thing you know, she gonna talk about some. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that She was emotional. She'd been crying and shit. And she actually could carry the tune. So kudos to Portia for that. Okay, last thing. So do y'all remember when they were talking about how there's a possibility that they may need to bring somebody else on the show, right? Another housewife. And Kenny was like, Well, I think that it's okay the way that it is right now. And I think everything was cool and wasn't as much drama, but I love it just like this. And Nene was like, uh, nah, bitch, we need to bring in somebody else. And of course, Andy asked Nene, of course, because that's his right-hand woman, okay? Who do you think, you know, what do you think should happen? Should we bring another housewife in? And then Candy's like, well, do you think somebody needs to be replaced? And Nene's like, I think somebody needs to be replaced. And Andy was like, uh, who do you think needs to be replaced? She was like, we gonna talk about that in your office? Okay, who do y'all think... She was talking about possibly replacing. Do you think it was just one person? Do you think it was more than one? We already know. I follow Nene on Instagram and Twitter and all that, okay? So I already know who she actually likes on the show and likes as a person. So my guess, if I were to guess, I for sure think she wants to get rid of Candy. That's just me, okay? I think in my heart and my spirit, she wouldn't mind if Phaedra went too. But Phaedra had some drama this season, so it would be good for ratings. And you already know, Nene is head honcho, and she kind of, you know, she wants a little bit that something going on, that little conflict. But Candy, if I had to bet, okay, I would say that's the person that she wants off the show. Let me know what y'all think about that down below, too. Y'all, it's a wrap on the show, son. I'm kind of sad, man. I like recapping for Housewives of Atlanta, but... You know what? There's other shit coming, going on. Other shit coming up. Uh, let's see. There's Love and Hip Hop Atlanta with my boy Stevie J. Okay. Uh, you know, and Jocelyn. Okay. I am excited to see what goes down with that shit. Let's keep it real. If y'all want me to recap that and continue to do so with those, let me know down below as well. And uh, I know a couple of y'all have been trying to tell me to recap uh, Married to Medicine. Y'all ain't gonna lie. I tried to watch that show. I also tried to watch Gossip Game, okay, or whatever the fuck, excuse me, that shit was that is on VH1. That's some bullshit that I know damn well ain't gonna be on air next season if it isn't. Who the, if it is, who the hell thought to bring that shit back? Okay. Gossip Game is the most garbage show on the planet. One. Married to Madison. I don't even have words. It's horrendous. Horrendous. I gave it maybe 10 minutes and I was like, fuck that. Uh uh, I can't. I can't do that shit. I'm sorry. For those of you all who watch it, God bless you, but I can't, I can't do it. It's too much. Them mother suckers on there be fighting and stuff. Y'all doctors. What? Huh? Doctors, wives, or whatever the F. No. No. Uh uh. 
I can't subscribe to that. So anyway, I'm okay with talking about crazy fools like DBJ and all that stuff. That's cool. So anyway, let me know if you guys want me to recap Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, because that's coming up soon. Or any other things you guys want me to recap, let me know down below. Also, if you guys have not checked out my latest recap, it was the uh, the Fix My Life episode that was on the OWN Network, of course, featuring Sheree, my favorite girl. Sheree and Bob Whitfield. I was kidding about my being her, be her being my favorite girl. Don't get it twisted. I know how a lot of y'all think about Sheree, okay? So, check out that video if you haven't checked it out yet I'll also link it down below and you already know how this goes follow me on twitter twitter.com forward slash social city hit me up on my facebook fan page or pinterest those links are down below as well as my blog the socialitelife.blogspot.com and of course hit me up on instagram at socialite sandy and you already know I love y'all and I will see y'all in the next video love y'all bye did y'all already know she was gonna take her by the uh, the shack that she's trying to build?